Now we're going to have uh, today's focus report here on the programme. And um, 35 nasty attacks in just over a year, the majority of them claimed by groups with connections to international terrorists. Now that is the situation for a variety of minorities in Bangladesh. Now in one of the uh, more serious latest incidents, the founder of the country's first lesbian and gay magazine, Rootban, was killed, the latest murder of an activist or a blogger. Well, as our reporter Sarabi Tandon found out, though, many saying the attacks have more to do with internal politics than anything else. On April 25th, a group of men entered this building in Dhaka and hacked to death LGBT activist Julhaz Manan and his friend Tonoy Mehbu. This was the latest in a series of attacks on minorities in the Muslim-majority nation of Bangladesh. Julhaz's family, who have hardly spoken to the media, agreed to tell us how they feel. When one of your very closest and nearest dears, dearest like your brother and sister is killed or murdered brutally, then actually you are left with no options of reconciliation. And after my brother's case, I found all my friends, all my relatives and all my colleagues and my, all my business associates. I saw fear in their, in their faces. Uh, something that they're afraid that it might happen to anybody. In 2013, such killings began with atheist bloggers. But over the last two years, the range of targets has broadened. Recent victims include professors, social activists and religious leaders. These arbitrary murders have also left moderate Muslims in fear. Two years ago, Islamic fundamentalists also killed Sufi cleric Ahmed Raza Farooqi's father. Not only Sufis, other religious leaders and priests are also scared for their life like us. We are all afraid. Afraid of those who pray like us, call themselves Muslims, but work against humanity in the name of religion. Seven people have been killed in the last month alone. 20 in the past one year. Who is to blame? The Islamic State and Al-Qaeda have taken responsibility for most of these attacks. But the government has adamantly refuted such claims. They insist that the opposition parties are behind these killings. Right-wing a party of Bangladesh Nationalist Party called BNP, headed by the ex-Prime Minister Begum Khalid Azia, so Begum Khalid Azia acted as a political umbrella to this homegrown terrorist network and the religious fundamentalist politics. It, it, it has a, a definite uh, uh, political motif. <clears throat> and that motive is to destabilize the government. Led by Begum Khalida, BNP is the main opposition party of Bangladesh. Their bitter rivalry with the current government, led by the Awami League, has lasted decades. This Muslim country might have chosen secularism at independence in 1971, but in an attempt to secure more votes, Begum Khalida and her allies have pushed for a more radicalized Islamic regime within the country. The Awami League, on the other hand, has come to power guaranteeing a secular state. We met Arif Jeptik, another liberal blogger in Dhaka, who has been in hiding since he started receiving death threats by anonymous fundamentalists. You see the list of 19 people, this is the latest list uh, they sent to all those media. The first name was Niladri Chattabhada, he is already dead, so they marked it on the red pan that they already killed Niladri, and this, the second name is mine. It's a scare tactic that Arif says won't work on him. Despite such threats, he has refused protection from the government. I have changed my lifestyles completely ups and downs, uh, but uh, no, I'm not afraid. We are not afraid. What? Because, you know, it's a movement. We believe something. We are trying to achieve something. We are trying to achieve a better Bangladesh. Arif and his friends were part of a social movement called the Shahbag protests that began in Dhaka in February 2013. This movement, led by young bloggers, demanded that secular democratic rights be guaranteed to all by the Bangladeshi government. 
A majority of those killed in the last two years were also part of these demonstrations. Arif believes there is a direct link between these murders and the protests. For instance, even though he follows Islam, he has been painted as an atheist. What they are doing is they are trying to portray all of us as anti-Islamists. Not only that, they are trying to say that all of us say bad thing against the Islam and Muslim, so our killing is justified. This is how For its own part, the government under Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina has done little to bring justice to these murders. Since 2013, only one case has been solved. Yeah, the situation there in uh, Bangla uh, Bangladesh, investigated by uh, Sarabi Tandon for today's edition of Focus.